Hi guys, so I went ahead and decided to make you guys a video uh, because I think that might be the easiest way to help us remember some of the joints that we talked about on Friday. So we're going to talk about the big joints here first. Um, so we're going to start up at the top. So this top section of the spine is called the cervical spine and it has seven vertebrae. The next section that starts at the base of the neck and goes to the bottom of the ribs is called the thoracic spine and it has 12 vertebrae. And then the bottom part is called the lumbar spine, and it has five vertebrae. So if we carry on with our joints, if we start up at the top again, um, the top of the upper extremity is called the shoulder, or we also call that the glenohumeral joint. Okay, and that's because that is an articulation between the glenoid fossa and the shoulder and the humerus in the upper arm. We'll talk about that one here a little more in a bit. The prime joint in the middle of the arm is called the elbow. And then as we get down into the wrist and the hand, we'll talk about those in the next few slides. Our main lower extremity joint is the hip joint or the acetabulofemoral. Again, because that's an articulation between the acetabulum and the femur. Moving down, we have the knee joint, okay, articulation between the femur and the tibia. Um, and we'll talk about the rest of the joints in the lower extremity as we go on to the next slides. So we're going to get a little more specific about each of those body parts. So zooming in on the upper extremity, again, we talked about the glenohumeral joint. This is the articulation between the glenoid fossa and the humerus, okay. We also call that the shoulder joint. When we look on the clavicle, so when we look on our clavicle here, um, we have two prime joints that we talk about. We talk about the sternoclavicular joint, and that's the articulation between the sternum and the clavicle, so the top of our sternum here and our clavicle here. Okay, That's one of those um, amphiarthrotal joints that really doesn't move or that really shouldn't move a lot. When we go to the other end of the clavicle, out here, we have our acromioclavicular joint or the AC joint. So this is the most commonly injured um, joint that's related to the clavicle. So again, we have our glenohumeral joint or the shoulder. Between the clavicle and the sternum, we have our sternoclavicular joint. And then between the clavicle and the acromion process on the scapula, we have our AC joint or our acromioclavicular joint. Again, cervical spine here at the top, and then our thoracic spine through the rib cage. The other joint we'll talk about here is our scapula thoracic joint. So on the front side of our scapulas, where they contact the rib cage, we have um, our scapula thoracic joint. Okay, um, again, that's on the front side of the scapula, between the scapula and the rib cage. So one more angle here, again we see that acromioclavicular joint. The glenohumeral joint or the shoulder. And then our scapula thoracic joint, remember is on the front side of the scapula, underneath the scapula, between the ribs. Okay, again that was our scapula thoracic. Then here at the top, we see that atlanoaxial joint. Remember, that was the pivot joint that only allows rotation, okay? We have our cervical spine and we have seven of those vertebrae. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So our cervical vertebrae end right here, okay? And then all these vertebrae down to the bottom of the rib cage are our thoracic and we have 12 of those. So down here is our thoracic vertebrae, okay? And this was our cervical again. So making our way on down the body, so we saw our cervical, I'm sorry, our thoracic vertebrae again, and then we have five lumbar vertebrae. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So here's the end of our um, thoracic spine, runs down here, and then this section is our lumbar spine. This bone is our sacrum right here. So this joint between our lumbar spine and our sacrum is called our lumbosacral joint. 
And that's another one of those joints, just like the SC or sternoclavicular joint, that really doesn't have a lot of mobility. The joint between our ilium and our sacrum through here, those are called our sacroiliac joints or our SI joints. Again, we have one on each side. Um, underneath the sacrum, we have the coccyx, okay, and this little joint is called the sacrococcygeal. That's one we don't need to worry about a whole lot at this point in time. Um, out here and here, we have our just our hip joint or our acetabulofemoral. Again, because that's an articulation between the acetabular fossa and our femur, head of our femur. Okay, so acetabulofemoral joint. Looking at the back side of the, the upper extremity again, we have our elbow joint. And then we have our radio ulnar joint. Proximal radio ulnar joint, sorry. It's important that we use proximal and distal uh, because we also have a distal, distal radio ulnar joint. So again, the big ones here, we have the hip joint, or the acetabulofemoral joint, the SI joints in here, lumbosacral joint at the bottom of the lumbar spine, excuse me, the lumbar spine and the sacrum. So looking at those same joints from the front side, here we have our lumbosacral joint between the lumbar spine and the sacrum. We look here, we have our acetabulofemoral joint or the hip joint. Okay, again, between the acetabulum and the head of the femur. Um, but we have our sacrococcygeal joint that we're not going to worry too much about. This in the middle here, this is called the pubic symphysis. This is one of those costochondral joints just like we saw in the ribs. Um, keeping in mind here that this middle part of all of our ribs is actually hyaline cartilage. Okay, so it's not actually joints. And those are called our costochondral cost joints. Okay, um, all of those joints that just have cartilage. So coming back to the elbow, we have the true elbow joint. That is the articulation between the humerus and the ulna. And then we have our proximal radial ulnar joint. That is the articulation between the radius and the ulna. Taking a little closer look again at the elbow, remember this elbow joint is only the articulation between the humerus and the ulna in the true elbow joint. Between the two, at the top and at the bottom, are our radio ulnar joints. Remember, it's important to specify them as proximal and as distal so that we know for sure which one we're talking about. We also remember that between the radius and the ulna, we have that interosseous membrane that connect the two and add more stability to those joints. When we come down into the hand and into the wrist, we have the joint between our um, radius and our carpals, and that's our radiocarpal joint. Then we have the articulation between um, our ulna and our carpal bones that we really don't talk about, okay? We more deal with our radiocarpal. Um, so this little section of bones, all these small little guys through here in this middle chunk are our carpals. This section here, all the way along, these are called our metacarpals. And then these end ones are our phalanges. So if we go through and combine those, okay, our radiocarpal joint is our radius and our carpals. We have the joint between our carpals and our metacarpals. We call that our carpo-metacarpal joint. Okay, or we can call that the CMC joint. We're going to spell it out though as much as we can. The articulation between our metacarpals and our phalanges is our metacarpal 
phalangeal joint. Okay. Now, in between each of our fingers, and we'll get to this a little more specifically when we get to the hand section, but all of these little joints in our fingers are called interphalangeal joints. And those are just between all the little articulations in the fingers. So looking at the lower extremity a little bit more specifically, um, we have our patella that sits on the front of our femur. So the joint between the patella and the femur is our patellofemoral joint. And that's a gliding joint and it only has one degree of freedom. The only place that can, patella can move is up and down. The articulation between the femur and the tibia is our true knee joint and we don't give it a fancy name, we just call it the knee. The articulation between the tibia and the fibula is called our tibiofibular joint. And just like we saw on the arm, we have a proximal one, and then we have a distal tibiofibular. So those are the prime joints in the lower extremity. Um, when we get into the ankle and the foot, this joint here between our tibia and our talus is called the tibio, I'm sorry, the talocrural joint. Okay, and that's our primary ankle joint. When we get down into the foot, again, the articulation between our tibia and our talus, which is this bone right in here, is called our talocrural joint. Here we have our distal tibiofibular joint. It's also important to remember, in between our tibia and our fibula here, we have that interosseous membrane, like we talked about in the upper extremity. We get down into the foot, these bones through here are our tarsal bones. And then we have our metatarsals. And we have our phalanges. Just like we did in the upper extremity. Keep in mind, these are tarsals and metatarsals, not carpals. Toes, tarsals. Okay. So the joints here between our tarsals and our metatarsals are called our tarsometatarsal joints. or a TMT, as we very nicely named them in class the other day. Um, this joint here between our uh, metatarsals and our phalanges is our metatarsal phalangeal joint. Okay, or our MTP joints. And then again, just like we saw in the upper extremity, all these little joints between our phalanges are our inner phalangeal joints. Okay, so that's the joints of the lower extremity.